he writes about you know the reality of Singapore. You know, it's more more than the food and the price you pay. It's the friends you're living with every day. You know, words like that, or uh, the sea is getting further each day. You know, which is reclaimed land. Yeah. You know, you you still really laugh. You know exactly. Yeah. You know, and 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 he's, it's relatable. He says words that sing of your country. You know, and if you think about it, I mean, that is a Singapore song. Hi everyone, I just want to start the show this way. People have asked me, why do I want to film long-form podcasts? Let me tell you why. (laughs) People used to take time to spend time with people. So I want to take time to spend time with people. Because you can't buy back time. And I have not spent much time with this guy in my studio over all these years. And I'm glad that he's here. And before I introduce him, I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to read it right off my computer. And this, I quote directly from the NLB archives. Oh, my God. (laughs) And I quote, he is undoubtedly one of Singapore's most recognizable and prominent producers, singer, songwriter, and musician. He has been involved in the entertainment scene for the past 34 years. Since winning the National Talent Time in 1982 with his group, The Dissonant Affair, he has been involved in almost every aspect of entertainment. In 1986, he recorded and performed Count On Me, Singapore. It was the first national sing-along song, and one hat still remains a favorite amongst many Singaporeans. Please help me welcome, there can only be one, the indomitable Clement Chow. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. Thank welcome you. to the show. Oh, great, great. That's a really old uh, oh, uh, NLB. It doesn't matter, South man, because the moment anyone Googles, that's the first fucking thing that comes out, man. <laughs> And it's so good to see you again. I haven't seen you in years. Yeah, man. good to be seen, man. <laughs> I haven't seen myself too. <laughs> the way things have been going. Oh my god! But you do know yeah, that yeah, you've yeah, been listed. Yeah, yeah. You are listed in NLB archives, right? That's crazy. I mean, but when you say thirty-four years, yeah. it is now forty-four. Holy crap! They really haven't updated that. Yeah, no, this, this is really old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. forty-four years. Huh? I think forty. Well, it could be forty-four going on to forty-five already. Oh yeah, man, yeah, yeah, yeah. dude. Yeah, it's been long. Yeah. Since 79? Yeah. Yeah, 80, 79? 86, yeah. wasn't it? Uh, when when Count On Me. But that's Count On Me, la, but yeah. career wise is way 79. before that. Yeah. Man, I was in that, primary yeah. three. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when I first went into MDC, came out Talent Time 1982. Mm-hmm. Now, that was basically a more visual thing, but I was yeah. already in NDP in 1980. Were you? Yeah. What were you doing in NDP in '98? <laughs> Driving vintage cars, looking like an old Tauke, you know, with <laughs> really? with uh, a, a friend of mine, Tony Kim, uh-huh. acting as a uh, my Tai Tai, you know. <laughs> Really? Yeah. And that was your first thing that you've ever done for the NDP. Yeah. My goodness me. See? <laughs> My goodness. You know, um, I'm, I am I have this series going on, you know. I, I'm tr- doing my best to bring okay. back these music icons of Singapore. Okay. You know, I've had Gingerbread with me. Jason, yes, Shahul, I saw that. and yeah, Hussein. Yes. Yeah. My and good friends. This is my way of, of, of tr- giving tribute to guys like you. To guys like them, and I hope to have more of these guys come mm. on the show mm. because I think Singapore and Singaporeans have got to know. Man, we were rocking those years, man. We were, yeah. Those were great days. Yeah, man. I know? mean, you guys made Singapore so lively with yeah. all that music, man. Very different. Yeah, yeah. They but, were gingerbread and all yeah, that. Right? Yeah, yeah. You yeah. yeah. so you said you started in seventy nine. Yeah. Let's let's talk about you. I I really want to find out because I really don't know. Okay, sure, sure, sure. <laughs> I mean, the I mean the things that lead one thing to another. Exactly. So yeah. I, I I think it's great for people to find out more about the poster child for yeah. NDP. <laughs> you know, <laughs> don't laugh, please. Laugh. It's true, man. Clement Chow is a poster child for NDP, yeah. uh, and this is an, an NDP special as well. I intend to have this, you know, uh, aired 
uh, on National Day this year? Poster child was once 27, you know, and then now I'm 63. Good Lord. Mate, you're not, that's not old. That is not old. Um, let's go back. Feel, let's go way, wow. way back, man. Let's talk okay. about 63, right? I'm not going to go that far back, mm-hmm. but let's start with where did you go to school? I've always wanted to find out. ACS. Yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Too bad. <laughs> I knew your face would change. <laughs> okay. I've, you, uh, al- I've always thought you ACS, you ACS guys are a little confused. You know, don't know yeah. the English when you're Chinese. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, the, the principal still has to tell the parents. They say, remember, don't tell your kids it's okay to fail Chinese. Huh? Because that's been our reputation, you know. <laughs> really? Now, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. ACS? I mean, really? Yeah. Chinese I mean, uh, yeah. not that strong? No, no. Uh, I mean, for all a lot of us, Chinese isn't our subject. Ah. We we'll always come out from the exam, you know. Uh, That's why I said you guys are so confused. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah my friends are always like, "How's your Chinese paper?" I said, "Soft." <laughs> <laughs> Where did you go after ACS? Uh, I that was my last stop because ACS is all the way. Yeah, it's all the way. Okay, so ACJC. Yeah, yeah. Well, JC was half a year. Okay. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And I kind of left that because I just had this creative streak in me which I needed to satisfy. Right. So I went into hairdressing, and mm-hmm. I went into uh, <laughs> interior designing. I've got a, I've got a bloody what they call a, 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 a don't laugh. <laughs> From Vidal Sassoon, I've got a set from Vidal Sassoon. Yeah, London, okay, bloody no, hell. So if you don't look good, we don't yeah. look good. <laughs> and 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 uh and I did interior designing. So uh-huh. we had a shop, a friend of mine, Henry, uh, we both combined, you know, our our talents and skills. Right. He too was like that. He was a hairdresser and an interior designer. Okay. So we started this place called Blades, you know. Blades, yeah, yeah, yeah okay. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. and we were at the, this is a white elephant place now, next to Pranayan Place. Um, what do you call that? Uh, what center? Uh, oh, you mean where where, where, where the, the electronics are now? You know, all that defunct place. Uh, it's a really, in front of a bus, uh, there's a bus stop in front. They're right uh, next to Pranayan Place. You know, okay, so you walk center point, <coughs> Pranayan Place. Emerald, Emerald. Uh, After Emerald. Okay, which is Pranayan Place? Going up to Emerald Hill. No, no, no. Yeah, so Pranakan Place is here, and and Prana, uh, Emerald Hill is this way. Right, right. But you cross, you go further down. There's okay. a bus stop. Okay. And there's a Byland build. No, not Byland building. I don't know what building. I forgot. Dude, name, man, right? I don't even recall that man. Yeah, yeah. Way before my time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, it's true. It's probably you probably won't know. Yeah, pro- yeah. I, yeah. Yeah, it's it's. We set a point up yet, man. At the yeah, time. but it's become some place for electronic. Oh. Electronics, I think. Okay. Yeah, I think okay. I haven't visited a place for a long time, but there's a bus stop in front where most people just, you know. Cuppage. Yeah. No, Cuppage is the other side. Right. Yeah, but this is the opposite end. Oh, I see. Where yeah. the Orchard School used to be. Yeah, probably. Probably. Yeah, but I okay. forget the name of the building. Anyway, mm-hmm. yeah, but that's where we started. So you started the hair salon? 81. Wow. I don't know. I was multitasking. I was in, I was in the army at the same time. Uh huh. Came out. Oh, no, came out, yeah. Then I was, wow, we did many things during those years. You know, it, it was all layered. So you stopped before A-levels to, to satisfy yeah. this creative yeah. craving. Yeah, so went out, did my thing, and uh-huh. I worked with uh, uh, Michael Tan, who was a Golden Scissors Award winner. Well, oh, that's time. a term I've not heard in years, man. Yeah, Golden yeah. Scissors, okay. <laughs> yeah, and so, you know, he had a salon in in uh, Tanjong Katong, mm-hmm. you know, so that I worked there for a while, but I couldn't. This is, this is not my thing. La. I mm-hmm. mean, yeah, because, I mean, I enjoyed doing it, and, you know, until, you know, after a while, four walls, you know, 12 hours. Then you just felt that you need yeah, to break up. Yeah, it's not up. my thing. La. It's not okay, my thing. Yeah. Okay. But I enjoyed it. Okay. You know, while while trying to be creative. And then uh, did interior designing. So we did a place called Sophia Lodge. Mm-hmm. That was the entire thing. Mm-hmm. But then we gave the whole business up because in 82 or 83, somewhere there, uh, all the architects, right, went into a recession Okay. Yeah, and so they became interior designers. Mm-hmm. And that then, was a Black Monday time. That's eighty five, actually, right? Oh, somewhere there, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then there was a big fight, you know, over. We used to do entire development, but then we were even fighting for 
a single bedroom. Okay. So not very good lah. Okay. Then I decided, okay, I shall use my, you know, skills for other things. So when you do stage designing, interior design is very useful. <laughs> oh. Because, you know, you you got sort of the engineer feel and as well as the the design feel, you see. So it's practical. So when you design stage stages. So you design stages. Yeah, I used to. I mean for events lah. Mm-hmm, you mm-hmm. know, then after that. But then that wasn't my thing. I mean, that was part of the skill that I You've acquired. acquired yeah. yeah, you know, so that we can use. But I mean, going back to 79, mm. uh, yeah, What? so what happens? is that's the time when I'm just about to enter to... Um, NS. Mm. Yeah, NS, right? <coughs> but prior to that, we were in school. Mm-hmm. I was part of the military band for a while, but the, the bandmaster was really good to us. He saw us saw the potential. Mm. A few of us, I mean, you, uh, even Sidney Tan and all that were all part of my group. Mm-hmm. Dr. Sidney Tan. So, we were, we were then given the opportunity to form a pop band. So, a pop band in school is kind of unheard of la, okay. in those days. La. Right. And the school actually bought drum set for us, gave us a music room. You know, wow. So, and we were called Symphony because there were nine of us, four rhythm section, five blowers. Okay. Awesome. So we were like, you know, that, that those days like fly baits, that kind of feel, right. you know. Right, right, right. So, big uh, sound. Yeah, big sound. Yeah. Big sound. And so we went on TV, mm. you know, we did. Ooh. On TV? Yeah. You how, f- that, how that happened? So, I, I forget the... See what you Oh, festival. I know, I know. Okay, because we participated in the Brass and Woodwind Festival. Okay. In those days, it was like the, the band... The, the, that was a big band thing. band explosion. Yeah, right. it was the big thing, right? And we won three years consecutively. Wow. Yeah. So, but it was quite challenging, lah. Mm-hmm. you know. But we did it. I mean, pop open, we, we swiped all the, you know, all three years. And then... Uh, I think that's why we were invited uh, to Youth Beat. <laughs> this was the show. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I youth Beat. The, youth Beat. Yeah. Sounds familiar. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it was around that era. Mm-hmm. You know, and then after that, we... What happened? Mm, okay, so the judges, right? Were f- some of them were from MDC. La. Right. So when we enrolled into Army, did our three months in Tekong. Then oh you God. got posted to MDC. <laughs> yeah, no, then my name came up and then say you got to go for audition. Nah. Right. But it's just formality. La. Just for anyone that's watching and listening and you're not from Singapore, the Singapore Armed Forces used to have, well, they still do, but they don't call it that anymore. Yeah, they call it something else. Yeah. yeah. We, we had this thing called the MDC. It's, it's short for Music and Drama Company. Yeah, of the SAF. Of yes, the right. Singapore, Singapore Armed Forces. Forces. That's right. Yeah. So we were enlisted and then uh, I got my role, mm. you know, as an artist. And then that was... You auditioned and you got in? Yeah, two years and I was emceeing, dancing, singing. All cannot do, but I have to do lah. Because <laughs> 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 so they punish you that way. So I never carried a gun, carried a mic. But it's so funny, you know why? When I went into NS, I went to audition in MDC. Oh, really? And I got it. Really? But I was disallowed oh. to move. The unit didn't let me go. Oh, why? Well, because you're a healthy specimen, man. <laughs> I wouldn't say. I, I think we were short of manpower back then, man. During those days, all the best three people all go there. I think it was Richard Tan. Shout out to Rich, Richard Tan. Okay. Uh, he was the guy who auditioned me. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah okay. And and I got I got the spot, and I was quite glad. I really wanted to do it. But oh, then well. again, you know, as yeah. fate would have it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you got into MDC. So yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And then that was the training ground, you know, in the days. Was it a good training ground for you? Yeah, yeah. It was fantastic. I mean, I think you learn a lot mm-hmm. when you're in MDC, uh, especially in the early days, because you, you know, you learn to fight for the opening and closing uh, items, right. you know, because they, it's like a show. And we had we had variety and yet creativity. So you learn how to, you know, create your costumes, go to find a place, go and sew the damn thing, you know, and then come back and then you got to learn the music arrangements and how to, you know, who's going to do your arrangements for you and then how how the style of the song and the item. Wow. Yeah. So mm. there's a lot of things you learn because the band was one section, the dancers was one section, yeah. the singers was one section right. and, then, and then there are those who create, 
you right. know. So that's how you, that's how you get the idea of production, producing, and we were creative in the in those days. We were very free mm. to do all kinds of styles mixed together. So it's very hard to say unless you see the photographs, and then you go, "Oh my God, how come you can do this one?" You know, yeah. nowadays we don't see this kind of stuff, and it's very true. Wow, I'm so even, envious, man. Even even today. Uh, group of youngsters in MBC. It's a very different world. How so? What no, have you heard? They they know. I mean, when they do stuff, right, they don't they 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 they've never seen the kind of costumes that we make. You know? Whether you know I mean the we were very Broadway, very Hollywood, mm. very glitz and glam. Yeah. Right? You know? But today it's not like this, you know. Yeah, it's a very different feel. Right. It's it's slick. It's mm. a little bit more you know K-pop <laughs> I don't know about K-pop <laughs> la, but you know I haven't really uh, seen a whole lot of their shows right but definitely during the music and drama company's uh, 50th anniversary you guys were glitzy when we all came back yeah. you know and then yeah. we showed all the all photographs right you know because some of us keep you know, well, I remember. I remember f- very well. It, it's in my day, anyway, yeah. and I think it was definitely inherited. You know, yeah. back in my day, from guys like you, right? Still glitzy as hell, man. Yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah. Because you know, like, like, I mean, there were a lot of artists mm. and music that we can draw from. Yeah, you know, and and it's very very colorful in mm. those days. Uh, mm. You know, I don't. I just. You know, whether it's Baccarat or whether it's mm. you know, Carpenters, whether it's, you know. Yeah. So to do that kind of thing and then do it Hollywood style, it's actually very nice. Yeah. You know, and then a mixture of Western, Eastern, mm. you know, type of things. And there was going on a lot of that. So could, would, would, would you say that your the real foundation for uh, Clement Chow yeah. moving forward as the producer, the right songwriter, the, the performer was okay. really more for MDC? Oh. Yeah, a lot of it is from MDC. But even prior to that, mm. I mean, I started singing as a kid in k- kindergarten. So my mom already made me do it because, you know, she could. <laughs> <laughs> because she could. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and music has always been my home. Uh-huh. My father is very British in his ways. Right. You know, although he's from Indonesia. But uh, so, so he just loves vinyls. Right. And he's left me 700 over vinyls. Wow. You know, and, wow. Uh, they, are, and they are very precious because the vinyls in those days, 33 and a half RPM. Right. That means a rate per minute, yeah. right? Yeah. They don't make those kind anymore because yep. it's heavier. Yeah. In the old days, they didn't have those materials that could be lighter. Yeah. You know, but. Uh, and and you, all the musicals from Anastasia, Showboat, mm-hmm. uh, King and I, you know, the whole shebang. Yeah, man. I Every night, I mean, my dad would be playing stuff like that. And then uh, Glenn Miller. Wow. You know? Wow. So all the jazz, Connie Francis, the mm. country stuff, which... So there's a whole lot of genre back in the day that he yeah, has. Yeah. yeah, and he just plays every night. Right. Every day when he comes back from work right. or relax. You know, it was the entertainment... Thing and then both my parents sing. Both mm. my parents. I mean, my mom plays piano as well. So mm-hmm. you know, they 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 do that lah. Are they performers as well? Uh, Were they, they performers? sing in choirs lah, right? Like church choirs and all right. that. You know. So even for me, my my early years background. I mean, it was in church, mm-hmm. but the, my church guys were awesome because the directors were all giggers. <laughs> that means they all came together and they could they did talent time as well right they were called Baba Queens you know and that's the name of the group right and really good harmony right so I can't think of anyone better to have that kind of uh, understanding of harmony in my younger days and then they did musicals mm. <clears throat> but nobody does you know church musicals lah, you know and they weren't hey hello they were not religious in that way uh, mm. that cheesy yeah uh, Right. But very, very swing and jazz, you know, in the old days. Mm. The musical's mm. really nice, you know. I found a common thread here, you know, bro. Mm. Uh, I, I, having spoken with musicians on my show, yeah. right? A couple of, couple of them, even my last podcast from, right. you know, with a name I shall not name. Um, and, and most of the influence, influence first, not a base establishment, mm. would always be mom, dad, playing vinyls. Right. Really? Right. It's right. always about, in, in, including for me. 
Okay, there right? we go. The influence is always on the vinyls being played since I was a kid. My uncles, you know, they'll be playing. My mom even. Nat from your Nat King Cole to my God, Slim Whitman, you know? <laughs> oh, nice, <laughs> nice. Yeah, Nat. Yeah, cool, yeah, cool. yeah. Nat King yeah. Cole, Slim <clears throat> Whitman, Charlie Pride, uh, Marty Robbins. That's a little further down the road, lah. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So, you know, um, it's, it's, the influence was, was crazy. I mean, of course, mm-hmm. Elvis, you know, my yeah. biggest influence. Yeah. Um, so, I find that there's such a common thread for musicians, guys like you, guys who got big, you know, guys who got so known, right? Who became celebrities, right? I mean, you were a celebrity. That's a fact. Uh, I didn't ask for it, but yeah, thank well, you. you. But you are a celebrity, you know, and I realized <clears throat> the, the, the influence always from the home. Mm. And I think it's, I think it's fantastic. It's good. Yeah, yeah. When the home has a good environment. Yeah, like but that. today, yeah. what do you think? This is just an aside now. Sure, yeah. Sure. Your, your opinion. Today, kids sitting down, in, sitting in front of the computers playing games. Yeah. Yeah. They play music too. Like my son, he will play stuff. Yeah. Funny enough, he, lo- he likes Kanye. Oh, okay. Gosh. Yeah, but, you know, <laughs> but he's quite a little soul too. One yeah, day yeah. I heard him playing, I heard him playing My Way from Sinatra. That's right. And like, what? <clears throat> What's going on? You know? But do you think today in most average households, there's influence from, say, the folks playing music at home, in their home? I don't know about folks playing music. Like. Mm. I think folks playing music for themselves now is no longer like a shared, sharing. Yeah. It's not a shared common thing. Like, yeah. I got Spotify, I got family yeah, 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 sharing, yeah. And, but everyone's listening to their own stuff. Yeah, and everyone's on the phones, on the yeah, earphones, yeah, you know, or, yeah. or whatever, you know. So yeah. so it's You're right. You're right. You know? I think so. I agree with you, man. Yeah. I agree with you. So okay, let's go back to your story. Sorry to just no, no, digress nothing, a little nothing, bit. Nothing. Anytime you want to digress. <laughs> it's fine. Uh so trying to piece it back. Yeah, so after MDC, mm. so all the two and a half years which I was there yep. training then came out in 82 right so the guys in MDCs you know heard of the talent time and we said hey let's let's put it together la. they have a group okay and then so we called ourselves the dissonant affair yeah so the dissonant affair uh, was born and then we came together Ross D Tahir uh, Tina Malati and myself right yeah Los- Rosli Hari Tahir yeah who, who passed on unfortunately okay you know since then uh, yeah so we won that year uh, what do you guys sing remind um, me I watched you guys I just cannot remember uh, what you sang yeah so we we sang uh Gotta get you into my life. Oh, Earth in yeah, Fire. Yeah, Earth in Fire, exactly. And right. Sydney uh, was our ranger, uh-huh. MD. And then uh, that was when, what's his name? Uh, uh, Iskanda. Iskanda Isma. Yes. Oh, the late, great Iskanda yeah, the late, Isma. Great, the late, great. Oh, man. He just came back. No, you know, because I just worked with Indra, his brother. Yeah, Indra, yesterday. Yeah. yeah. You know, so I was trying to shuffle between the two brothers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Iskanda just came back from Berkeley then. Yeah. Then he was the judge, one of the judges. Right. You know, so I remember it was, uh, yeah, great. I mean, I really enjoyed those years and all the variety that comes with talent time, you know. There's a lot of harmony there going on. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so... The whole Singapore was... was we were hooked yeah. on talent time. Yeah, I mean, and, 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 and you know, we were saying, oh, all this, the soloists, the duets, and then the... Do you remember this duo called... Uh, I mean, they, they named themselves Vaudeville. <laughs> yes. It was, Vaguely. It was... A black and white minstrel act. Yes, I do. But do you know who they were? No. <laughs> That's why I cannot reveal. Why? <laughs> no, 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 don't do this. Don't do this. It's a long time ago, man. Come on, don't do this. 82, right? This was? Yeah. Vaudeville, black and white minstrels, right? Give a guess. They are very prominent today in the musical theatre scene. Musical theatre? Or, or, the, or, or the theatre scene. Very prominent. Just give a guess. Theater. You will know them. I tell you both names, you go, oh shit. <laughs> Theatre. Yes. But it were creative days, yeah, where people paint their faces, look like, you know, like yeah, Tanya, yeah. you know. Because back then, back then, there was a popular show on TV called The, the Black and White Minstrels. Remember That's that? That's right, of course. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. we know that we they took a they took a leaf out of that playbook. Yeah. yeah. That was great. Who are these guys, man? Who are they? <laughs> 
<laughs> so, yeah. Ivan Heng and Glenn Gui. <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> they were never revealed because they were always in black and white. <laughs> they were vaudeville. Yeah, they were vaudeville. Yeah, so nice, right? I mean, in the old days, vintage. But yeah. I realized Talent Time was also a springboard. And Hussein, she was here on of my course. show. And she, yeah, it was a springboard. It was a springboard for you too. Yeah, she was the singer for ABU, right? A winner. ABU, yeah. yeah. Right? Was she, did she sing for ABU? Yeah. Wasn't that Kay Hamid? I think also... Uh, there and- was a controversy about that. Hey, Will Xavier, don't get angry with me. Uh-huh. Uh, he wrote the song, remember? Ah but yes, there yes, was yes. one year. Oh, okay, we, okay. Yeah, and he wrote there was a beautiful song. I will love you. Mm, uh, okay, okay, and okay. The guy who sang it and got the song through to the finals was Jat Ali. Yes. Then, for some reason, those powers that be at that time decided to have K Hamid sing it for the finals. Gosh, missing her. Yeah. And then, where is she now? Uh, somewhere in the states, and I heard that she was doing accounts, and I was like, "Why?" Huh? Yeah, but okay. don't, don't. It's just hearsay, yeah. Uh? Right. Yeah, don't quote me because I don't know. Anyway, you know? it's on camera. <laughs> uh, it's okay. Yeah. Well, but don't quote me. <laughs> oh my goodness! Yeah, but people were quite upset because I had, I have to, I have to admit, I was one of them too because I felt that Jot. Just deserved Justified it. Yeah. the whole song, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. And he deserved it. Amazing yeah? voice. Yeah, but Will Xavier wrote a wonderful song. Right, but yeah. where is it now, you see? That's the thing. Yeah, all these songs, huh? Hey, Will, yeah. I, got, I got to have you in my show. I need to ask you that question. <laughs> yeah. I'm shouting out to you again, yeah? Just to remind you, I still want you in my show. Yeah. <laughs> We can have burger again, Bill. Yeah, yeah. That was the last time I, I sat down with him and had Burger King. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, well, Will has been is going to be busy for a while because right. you know, yeah. But he'll be on. Eventually. Good, good, good. Yeah. So yeah. Com- so coming back. So talent time was is, is a springboard. Supposedly, it looks that yes, way. Apparently, it was. I mean, yeah. so when we won, definitely in the next three years was so busy. Mm-hmm. Radio, television, you know, and. Uh, but that was just kind of uh, when it happens. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it was a lot. Yeah. You know, a lot to go on. Yeah. And those days, the producers were all, you know, very well known, you know, uh, Limsek. Oh, yeah. You know, and yeah. then. Uh, uh, oh, what? Limsek's mentioned again. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, he's everywhere. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, but he was very uh, instrumental yeah. in a lot of the yeah. the old programs that happened in the eighties. Very good stuff, you know. And and uh, who was the other? Ah, never mind. I will remember. Danny so- Cole. No, no, another producer that was very... very J.T. Ko. J.T., yes. yes. I've Ko met Janto. J.T. Ko. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah. And he's been re- recently releasing all these old footages of us, you know. Is it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, on his own, you know. But it was amazing because, like, I've never seen myself this way. And I forget that we had this show mm-hmm. or that show and he's kept the archives. Mm. So he's put, you know, a little... Well, what's J.T. doing now? Retired. Yeah, he's probably la, but he's got his own thing going la. Right. Yeah, for sure. Right. That's so, a name I have not heard in yeah, yeah, ages. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. love the man. Yeah, he's I good. met I've met him once or twice. Yeah, he's a good yeah. guy. Good Especially guy. when I got kicked out of SBC contests. And oh, he's one of those also. I mean, no, no, no. He got out, you know, and he's discovered that there's life outside of. RTS or SBC SPC, or yeah. TCS yeah, or yeah, yeah. Media Corp or they just cannot make up their free, their bleeding minds. Yeah, about, yeah. yeah, okay. So you know he's happy. You know, so that's one one thing. But yeah, so so talent time is you know given us that springboard. Yeah, you know, so so that got us very visual. Right. You know, uh, wow, from Chinese to Malay channels yeah. as well, and yeah. all the English. Yeah. You know, programs with lips. But the next time something like that happened when it, when it became a, a kind of a springboard for, for, for many others as well, was years later when Rolling Good Times came out. Ah, around. yes. Right? Rolling Good Times. Yeah, and, and, and it made some people. It made some people. I just don't get it. For a long, long, long time, Singapore has not had something yeah. like this. Yeah. And I think it's so sad because it really, I think even to today, regardless, right, yeah. nationally, we would still go, whoa, yeah, we're going to watch that. I think if we did one today, mm-hmm. you know, I think the level of, of music and musicianship and performance yeah. definitely be at a different place. Yeah. 
you know, because of so much that's going on now. And, uh, you know, it'd be interesting, you know, where the young would con- continue to to uh, support or see their, you know, their own... Your own friends, their you own, own generation, yeah, khaki. Yesterday, I was at the concert, right? Right. And they had a pre-concert mm-hmm. before the actual shows. Right. And they had this band from Sota. All the kids are from Sota, 17-year-olds, you know, awesome. Really? Beautiful. Watch them. Yeah, look out for them. I mean, of course, they are, you know, the inexperience shows in a little here and there because, you know, stamina and all that. You know, but doesn't matter. You know, they were good, you know, musically and they could do... Can you imagine 17 year old girl coming up small, small size, you know, and she's doing Truth the Fire, you know? Yeah, Shaka Khan. Wow. <laughs> yeah, and, really? Yeah, and the music is is powerful. You Ooh, know? yo. Yeah, yeah. So all the young boys are learning, all the, the chops are very, you know, they're not, it's not an easy song to play. No, definitely not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so it was really nice and I enjoyed it, you know, enjoyed watching it. So they are the ones, and then you see the younger kids, huh? Ah, and, you know, look up to these people. Yeah. And they say, yeah, that's the next generation. Yeah, the next generation, but how are they going to get exposed? Because you no longer have great guys like Horace. Yeah. Right? You don't have... But even people like, you know, uh, in your profession. Right. Necessary. I mean, those days, Larry Lives, Susanna J. Teo, all these people, right. they will come on and they will just continue to mention yeah. and, and make aware. Right. All that was existing, right? You know, what I mean, and, and there's a lot of buzz going on around, even you know, between all the MCs and the radio DJs and right. all that kind of. So there's a lot of that, you know, which helps, you know. I don't know about that, you know, Clement, because these days, right? Uh, from what I know, I might be wrong. I can stand corrected, but I what I I know is is that you don't just play songs of artists is picked by another producer to play on your shift. So it's not like in the US, you know, where you, you, you hear something good and you put it on, right? Ah. And then you give publicity to artists. Right, right, right. It doesn't happen that way here. I don't, at least I don't, at least from what I know. I, okay. Again, I, say, okay. I, I, can, I can stand corrected if yeah, I'm wrong, yeah. but I don't think I am. So, you know, and then you need to also have these people recording, right? Sure. And then, you know, and then if you go with a label, it might not necessarily be a good thing either, but you can also go independent. But not many people. I don't know. I don't think people... Yeah, go, it's, yeah. it's a very different route. It's no longer organic in our own, yeah. you know, the way it just happens, you know. Yeah. And now it's very planned. Right? Everything is yeah, just... Yeah, formatted, yeah, planned. Yeah. And then we don't know whether or not there's going to be any governance on this, these sort of things, yeah, right? Yeah, in the old yeah. days, I mean, the way things came up, was creativity could flow. Yeah, yeah creativity yeah, but, could flow. Yeah. yeah. I was like, wow, Farida Dola, you know, <laughs> <laughs> in the old days, or oh, wow. You know, you see, you hear names that you, Carol Ann Fernandez. You yeah, know, yeah, this, yeah, yeah, Carol names. Ann Fernandez, yeah. My God, I don't know where all these wonderful people are, yeah. you know, anymore. But you know, back then when I was young and then watching guys like you, Watching guy, uh, you know, divas like Anne mm. Hussein, listen to Kay Hamid, mm. right? And not forgetting, not forgetting Anita Sarawa, right? And all these people. And I go, wow. You can just feel all that creativity <laughs> oozing, you know? This is like, to me, Singapore is like, this is a land for music, man. Yeah. It's not just the Philippines, man. Singapore could hold its own ground, you know? And I'm so proud of that. Yeah. So proud of that. Now that I'm speaking about that and feeling a little bit more nationalistic, <laughs> let's go to the, the big elephant in the room. Count on me, Singapore. Okay. <laughs> the first ever singing along national song. Yes. And to this day, very much loved. Yeah. Of course, as the years gone by, we had right. Dick writing Home. Oh, yeah. Which is a beautiful song. Right. Right. I'm not going to take that away. It's, to me, that's a great song too. But Count On Me, Singapore has got its roots, man. You know that in the times, in, in that period of, of time in Singapore. Yeah. Was when our true nationalism came to its full. I've never forgotten that. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I remember, you know, the NDPs were like in their own national stadium. And there was one particular one. Was it the Jubilee uh, anniversary? 25th. The 25th. Yeah. Where the four, the, the old national stadium, the four towers, the floodlight towers, were lit up like birthday cake candles. Yeah. And wow. the whole stadium became a birthday cake. Right, right. <laughs> and the things we used to do, man. 
creative, people man. yeah you're so creative yes right and the feeling of nationalism stand up for Singapore then count on me Singapore yeah. that was the that era was- man where where we were really growing as Singaporeans exactly really that's the pro- word yeah. Yeah. yeah growing I mean you know it was a nation <laughs> Starting, you know, yeah. starting up. Then yeah. don't forget, no, as the years went by to 1990, right? We had the Malaysia Cup final that we won, right? With with that team, mm. the dream team that we had at Quarking the time. Songs, it, right? no, 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 no. Oh, Quarking later. Songs, later, this was oh, yeah, Abbasad, yeah. Fandi, ah, Fandi, Sundram, Songhai, Malik Awa, these guys, David Lee, right? So it, 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 that was like also part and parcel of that of growth, right? Yeah, yeah. The feeling of patriotism. The feeling of great pride to be mm. Singaporean. Uh, I've never forgotten that feeling. And Count On Me Singapore, when the first time it came out on our television sets, was a very, very, not that you're old now, but a very, very young Clement Chow <laughs> <laughs> on this sampan with a paddle. <laughs> Yes, Later yes, on, yes, at the yes, end yes. of this, at the end of this episode, we will be playing the original video okay. of that song. So stand by, everyone. Wow. You gotta watch this, you know. Yeah. Uh, and so that's at the end of the show. Yeah. So we got that one ready to play. Yeah. But I want to ask you, how did Count on Me Singapore actually happen? How do you get there? What was the story behind it? Well, I mean, you know, like because I was working with Jeremy Montero. Yes. Okay. You know, we were we were uh, we had a studio, you know, and uh, doing a lot of jingles. Right. You know, and one day Jeremy said, "Hey, we've got a national jingle to do." Uh huh. You know, and uh, recorded the song in one hour. Right. You know, <laughs> vocally, <laughs> and then that was done. And then uh, I said, "Okay, thanks." You know, I got. Paid what I should be paid, right? Because it's a national jingle, and it was quite well, you know, uh, paid. And then after that, uh, oh, a week later, eh, hey, Lemon, they want you to do a f- uh, what filming? Uh? I said, what filming? What are you talking about? And I was like, you know, I got to get up five o'clock. No, <laughs> National duty. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I didn't know what I was. I was. Oh, you didn't know. I didn't know what I was. He just told you there was a call yeah, time. Yeah, five yeah, yeah, uh-huh. yeah. Then you go, and then you're supposed. Then it was Willie Tang. I remember this guy. Who? Sorry, his name again? Willie Tang. Willie Tang. Okay. Who's the photographer? I mean, the videographer and right. photographer. And it was right. really good, you know. And uh, I, I remember, you know, like we had. That's why we went to Sembawang, you know, and there's, I, I revisited that place recently, you know. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, I mean, brought back a lot of memories because in the morning, right, when the Sambang was going out, you know, that particular area has a, a school of fish uh, that would often jump. Oh. Yeah. So as I was rowing, I remember the fish would jump oak. Over my sampan. Huh. Yeah, it was quite amazing. And I was like, oh, okay, wow. That was interesting, you know, for the morning. And I was like, what else can I do, right? <laughs> <laughs> Except pretend to sing. I mean, mime the thing, like, because they were playing loud, loud. You know, on the speaker, <laughs> and then, <laughs> open mouth. So they were playing the speaker on the banks of... I think so, if I remember correctly. What, 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 what place in Sambaong is this? This is a wet gap area. Is no, it? no. It, uh, it was a jetty. Oh yeah, a particular jetty. Okay, you know it was very nice, and they had this bio house or something. I can't remember bio house. Yeah. Okay. It was called you know if you if bio you, house is a is a makan place, isn't it? I think so. Yeah. But, I mean that's why it's called now lah. Oh, okay. Or, or, okay. Or defunct already. Okay. But it was that. That area. what is a spot? Okay. Yeah, that spot. You know? Right. So so it was nice. I mean, if I go back. You know, and look, I probably will find some pictures, lah. But oh. anyway, so uh, yeah, I visited that. I revisited that spot. You mm-hmm, know, mm-hmm. Uh, thirty years later. You know, so it was interesting. But um, yeah, oh, because MediaCorp did a revisit. Oh, for me, yeah. I so see. They, we went back there to 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 film the place. Right, yeah, right. Yeah, so is that good, is that going to be really soon? I'm pretty sure. No, for I it. think it's been really released. Oh, really? It's an old program. Okay, okay. Yeah, okay. later. Yeah, but sh- so much has happened, my God. <laughs> like, I don't even remember. Oh, my. Yeah, so anyway, we. we you have, went to do the filming. Yeah, anyway, uh, but 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 that that particular day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it was. You know, next thing you know, it's over. <laughs> and and we were at. You know, we were, I was with. Willie Tang has this yacht, this amazing yacht. Okay. Yeah, with this black. Poles, you know, black towering uh-huh. uh, 
sales, 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 for the, for, for the yeah. sales, yeah. And his yacht is, you can identify anywhere. Lah. Okay. So I, I remember somehow all this connected somewhere and the experiences of it, but that's it. Lah. Yeah. So, so once that happened, uh, next thing I know, uh-huh. you know, watching move, watching a, a, a show in, in the cinema and you see your own face coming out, no? You mean you, you, you didn't expect it to be like that? It was it was at 1,500 overtimes in the early years. And I remember we sold 120,000 cassettes. <laughs> 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 cassettes. Oh my God. <laughs> the word. All these youngsters will go, huh? Tip, tip, tip. What, what tip? What tip, what tip. Yeah, yeah. How, how to play, how to hear. Uh, you. And then there were, uh, yeah, I don't know if there was ever a vinyl, but there was cassettes, that's for sure. Okay. You know, I still No, have, I know there was one because I yeah, bought one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, and then and then uh, it just went on. You know, so like you were saying earlier mm. on, you know, these songs really capture a moment simply because when they first started like stand up, mm-hmm. you know, for Singapore, Count On Me and then We Are Singapore. Yeah. I mean, all of them have you know, have stories because it's rolled over time. Yeah. It's collected. Then, you know, it becomes a bigger ball. Yeah. But it's the same song. Yeah. You know what I'm trying to, and then through history, you know, this song has, has seen much of the change in Singapore mm-hmm. from 80s till now. You know what I'm trying mm-hmm. to say? And we just sang it yesterday. Oh my God, the crowd, crazy. I'll show you a clip later. <laughs> you know, what? Wow. So people still love it, you see? It's yeah. evergreen. Yeah. How do you personally feel about the song? You. Well, I mean, you know, it, it, for me, I it wasn't about me. It wasn't about a national message. Yeah. You know, so when it came to me, you know, I was, this is what you represent. Now, I thought it was really, uh, I mean, not to sound like, wow, you're so quiet, you know, or, 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 or patriot. No, but really the feeling of pride and just being able to stand there and represent the nation in a particular message. Mm-hmm. Because that's what it's about, you know. Yeah, yeah. Music isn't a preaching language, it's a reaching language. Right. You know, so it reaches the people and the government found it effective. Right. You see, so until today, they're still trying to find the right, but very hard to find the right song. Yeah. You know, I think the road ahead was the, 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 the one, you know, mm-hmm. most recent that has reached, you know, out. reached out properly to the, the yeah. Young and old, yeah, you know, and it had a wide range. Yeah, yeah. It's a great song, yeah, you know, you know. So apart from home, yeah. you know, this this was the later, you know, uh, what they call serving la, yeah, which is I love no, it. I mean, I I love it. I yeah. love home as well. Yeah. Love it. Of Make course. your hair stand, man. Yeah, yeah. So so there's uh, yeah. So these songs have now sort of being embedded in our national yeah, identity you know, yeah, so mm, and culture be, you know which is good sure but let me ask you since you mentioned you almost mentioned a full word but you didn't patriotism yeah right I'm going to ask Clement Chow how much of a patriot you are because you strike me bro to be one of those okay one of those yeah ones. yeah yeah real, real patriotic you know because why because you were very involved in Sing Singapore Oh yeah! In two thousand and salute Singapore twenty fifth anniversary. Oh, you are the poster child, uh. <laughs> No, but there was all opportunities, right? You know, like swing Singapore, mm. swing Singapore, or sing Singapore. Sing Singapore, me not swing Singapore. But there was swing Singapore. There too. was swing Singapore. Wow. Yes. Can I you mean, imagine how fantastic that life was, was? Yeah, you close up the whole, whole Orchard, Orchard Road. Road. Yeah, <laughs> 20, what twelve <laughs> stations of DJs? Oh, on cherry uh, pickers, uh, man. Yeah, and I was on the cherry picker right in the middle of uh, Scotch Road. Uh-huh. You know where Tangs was. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I was right up there doing my thing, man. It was like so fun. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. I have paper clippings of those. You no, know, I I told myself because at that time I was too young to do that, right? Mm-mm-mm. I told myself one day I want to be on top of that cherry picker. Then fuck, no more swing <laughs> Singapore. What the hell? You know, it's one of my things I wanted yeah. to do. You know, they should bring back this thing. You know, that's the thing. Yeah. I mean, I was just say, who the hell did I say this to? Yeah. I was having a chat with Cyril Lim, MC. Ah, yes, I know. On who. one of my episodes, yeah. right? And I was lamenting about this shit. You know, I yeah. mean, it's like in the past, not too long. Long ago, right? 
pre-pandemic, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. We could walk down Orchard Road. There's so much shit happening, man. You got so many road shows, so many shows. I mean, mm-hmm. you had Neon City Civic Center. Something's yeah, yeah, always yeah, yeah, yeah. going on. Yeah, yeah. Right? Outside the Paragon even, right? Yep. And then, you know, I mean, Orchard Road, man. I mean, it was great. It was a great place to be in. Uh, and, and now... Now, and I've been proven right. Yeah. I told Cyril, all that music, all that <laughs> activity, right? <laughs> all that fun that we used to do. Like, you remember, it, there, was even a, there, there was even a time where the last, I think so, last or first Sunday of the month, Orchard Road will be closed up for cars. Okay. And we could cycle on it. We could walk on the streets and everything. Well, I don't recall much of there that. Was, yeah, yeah. There was a time. <laughs> there was a time. Okay. Whoa. Oh, that was so unintended, but it was so natural. Okay, anyway, so... Mm. And I told Cyril, I said, look, you know, I, I, but the, the difference is that when, you're, when I walk down Sentosa, along Siloso Beach, pumping, man, music, woo, pumping every step of the way. But, and then now, recently, a, couple, a week or two ago in the press, they're planning to do... A lot more of these it Sentosa. Right. But right, right, right. Fuck it. Why, 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 hell, why, why, I why? Mean, well, let's talk about Singapore, man, on mainland. Yeah, because Sentosa feels there's not enough thunder, you know, where they are. And they're very threatened always when, really? when the thunder comes out into the city, you know, and not into Sentosa. <sighs> but it's okay. That's that's whatever, you know, it goes on inside, you know, uh, let them be that way. But um oh, yeah, you're right. I mean, I was now so you go, now you walk down Orchard Road, <laughs> all you see are buskers. Yeah, you know, and 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 you know, it's very yeah. Even now, Media Corp's having this competition for buskers. Yeah, I mean, I mean, do we? Re- I mean, don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with busking. There's nothing wrong with with encouraging buskers. I I, I applaud that. Yeah, but I'm yeah. saying that that we used to do so much more. Yeah. <laughs> For budding talent in this exactly, country. Exactly. Right? Yeah, la. You know, the opportunities are very different now. Yeah, no, you, from Sing Singapore, you moved me to Swing Singapore. Let's move back to Sing Singapore. Yeah. So Sing Singapore and the uh, 25th anniversary. Yeah, so you Singapore. asked about patriotism. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so you are poster child, man. I mean, don't you agree with that? Well, I mean, one thing led to another. I didn't I didn't plan to be a yeah, poster child. Yeah, I know, but, child, but you when know. I say poster child, it means that you didn't plan it that way. I know that, but... Yeah. People, I mean, the powers that be, the people who yeah. are in charge of yeah. each and every year, you know, they look at Clement Chow, they look at Clement Chow, they yeah. call Clement Chow. <laughs> you are a natural poster boy. Those were the days, yes. Still yeah. today, you just had a concert yesterday. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Still yeah, a poster yeah, yeah. child, man. Come on, man. Oh, I'm glad to be able to still do it, you know, after all these years, to be honest. You yeah, know, because, yeah. yeah, things change so quickly, move on so quickly. Yeah. Guess what? It's August. <laughs> August 23. <laughs> Where did the first three quarters of the year go? Yeah, yeah, you know, I know. I mean, so I know. fast. Fast, man. Life too fast. Too fast. Yeah, too exactly, fast, exactly. Man. We all say the same thing, but it's true. We don't know how to slow down and being quiet here in Singapore is an art. Yeah. Is an art. I think so. You know? Yeah. Outside of Sing Singapore and Salute Singapore, you did some funny stuff. Like? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about Laughing Stock by Pony Canyon. Laughing Stock? Yeah. What? You were one of the lyricists for a song called It's Okay La. Oh yes, okay. Now it's okay. La was featured in the Walao Gang. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So we had this. Uh, we had three albums uh, of Walao Gang, which you can find on YouTube. You know. Yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah, I mean, it was kind of like a, but it didn't. How do I put it? Huh? You see, it, it was a spin-off from the what's that? Calypso. Uh, no, the earlier comedy group. Um, uh, the copycat clan. Uh, copycat clan. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Now that was a cassette. <laughs> yeah, and and it was great. Yeah. I loved the, you know what what they were all doing. You think the young people under- you remember or, or know all this? No la, they Copy don't know Copycat clan. Was, they don't know. Yeah, because yeah. you see today that kind of humor is plenty. Yeah. So it doesn't make you know an impact anymore. Yeah. yeah. But in those days, mm-hmm. and it's the way the humor was. Uh, put across, yeah, clever, very yep. clever, yeah, you know. So, so, so 
it, I love that. I mean, I used to do a spoof on that one. And I used to copy some of their material, you know. Yeah, I remember I watched you on TV. There was one years and years and years yeah. ago and you were dressed as a chef and you, you oh. did a pair, you did, you changed the song from Cheryl Crow's, uh, oh, All yes. I Want to oh, Do. Oh my God. All I Want to Do is Have Some Fun. <laughs> yeah. And you went, All I Want to Do is Fry Chow Fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, I remember that. Yeah. Wow. Now that you bring it up. Good Lord. Well, I, I, the purpose of me asking you about this, about uh, it's okay, la, okay, um, is because I, I listened to that song. Okay. I did. I have to do my homework. I okay. always do my homework okay. before I have my guest here, okay. right? It's due diligence and respect. It is more Calypso. Yeah, reggae. I know. Yeah. And then you, there was one more. Singapore, a real fine country. <laughs> country. And that one is country. <laughs> yes. Right? It's a, it's, it sounds like a country song. Well, it isn't like a country. It is yeah, in yeah. that genre. It was meant to be. I want to ask you, man, why? Why? Uh? Why? <laughs> I mean, is it because we don't have a local sound? Something that we can call our own? What do you think? Some, well, I mean, in those days, that's why I think that the idea, you know, it was muted. Mm. You know, uh, it was uh, actually the brainchild of uh, Jeffrey Tan. Okay. There's this guy from SP, uh, SPH. Okay. You know, and uh, Jeff, Q, Sinsan, myself, three mm-hmm. of us, you know, we, we put it together. But I just felt, I mean, I was riding along it simply because, okay lah, I mean, there were some things that, you know, we, we could do, some things we, like for example, I had some freedom in writing certain songs, but a lot of the ideas came from Jeff. Okay. And I felt that, um, yeah, it could have been not so thought out, mm-hmm. if you understand what I mean. Yeah. Yeah, because sometimes you can't think humor. Yeah. It's just got to be... It's spontaneous. Yeah, spontaneous. And also timing how you deliver. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's very important. But yeah. we were trying. In those days, there was a there was a hole. That, you know, after Kopi Kek Clan, there was a yeah. hole. You know, for local humor. Nobody has done local humor except us. So, my... my what I'm curious to, to, to know from you, in your opinion, your vast experience, right? Clement, I mean, bro, do you think we have a unique sound that we can call our own? Uh, what kind of sound? You're talking about a uh, humor or... No, when you, about- listen, when you hear Calypso... Oh, oh you hear see. reggae, you think I Jamaica. See. Yeah, yeah. You yeah, think yeah. Caribbean. Yeah, 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 yeah. When you hear country and western, of course you know it's that part of America, right? So... Would Singapore, does Singapore have its own unique sound or, or are we still searching or has anyone even bothered to search and discover or create? You once said the Singaporean sound is simply about Singaporean experiences. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So what do you think? How can we culminate what you've said into building, developing, creating, inventing? A new a sound could be new, but everyone can relate and say that's Singapore, that's Singaporean outside of Singlish. Yeah, well, I mean, take for example Mark Chan. Mm. You know, he writes some pretty good Singapore songs. Mm-hmm. In fact, he has a song called In Singapore, mm-hmm. which is, I think, very uh, true to what. Singapore is. Right. <clears throat> you know, he's got great melody. It's pretty original to me. Is there a beat that we can call our own? No. Not just words. I'm thinking about a beat, for example. I mean, you know, apart from... A style. <clears throat> apart from mishmashing everything. You know, the, that's the usual thing, right? You have some Uhu playing in the background with tabla, you <laughs> yeah. know, and you have some, you know... That, <laughs> the people who did that, right? I mean, okay, let's let's look back. I mean, the people who did that with the, with the, with the what, uh, Uhu and the yeah, tabla... Tablas and... and, uh, and it started with and culture... And sh- no, no, culture it started shop? with Tokyo Square. Yeah, that one is the yeah yeah. Kuchen, then the same the, the same Kenny, I think, I think. Yeah, yeah. And then after that, the same guys moved over to form another band, Culture Shock. Culture Shock, correct. With Douglas when he when he's yes. he, when he was getting really big when he was much younger than, uh, in Rainbow. Yeah, right? Kenny C. Yes. Yeah, and then after that, <clears throat> it became Culture Vulture. Yes, that's with Martin, I think. Thank. And then stopped. Exactly. Right. So it, there was no continuity, but we were getting somewhere. Don't you think so? Yes. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, for, I mean, for them, it was fortunate because they mm-hmm. had opportunities that they will never get again. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and yeah. today they're all, you know, big time MD producers for Ame and all this. You know. Wow. Yeah. So they, they have 
a different uh, how do you call arena. So don't you think that today's producers should pick something up like that and then encourage our younger, the younger lot in the music business today? Not many of them, though. To I add, think to to just continue. No, this. no. But I feel like instruments don't make uh, a, uh, a, an identity mm-hmm. because our instruments are all you know from everywhere, from India, right. from you know China, from. Uh, Malay, you know, right. Malay cultures and all that. So we are a, a, a melting pot. Right. Of So if our sound is like that, it's like that. So <laughs> that's how I feel. But, I mean, take for example, Marco's, you know, uh, song, Mark Chan's song. Right. You know, in Singapore, he writes about, you know, the reality of Singapore. You know, it's more, more than the food and the price you pay. It's the friends you're living with every day. You know, words like that. Or uh, the sea is getting further each day. You know, which is reclaimed land. Yeah. You know, you, you still really laugh. You know, exactly. Yeah. You know, and, and, and it's relatable. He says words that sing of your country. You know, and if you think about it, I mean, that is a Singapore song, you know, to me, you know, which I feel like, you know, that sings of the everydayness of your own culture, which is important. Right. You see, that's why, I mean, just to sidetrack a little, I mean, I really like Jose Marichan from mm-hmm. Philippines mm-hmm. because he depicts the Filipino cult- everyday culture. Right. You know, whether it's in love, whether it's in just the the, the, the street and it's walking by and the faces, you know, going by him. You know, there, there, there's a lot of imagery, you know, that people don't write about. You see? So it's more the words rather than the beat. Yeah, see, music is is just neutral. Yeah, how you orchestrate it is up yeah, to you. Yeah, yeah, muse is spirit, right? right. And so, so what makes it Singaporean? Yeah. You know, it's just you as a Singaporean living and expressing the everydayness of your surrounding. Mm-hmm. You know, that could be Singaporean. Mm-hmm. Or, I mean, <clears throat> and if you happen to hear a lot of uh, uh, or, 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 or you know, t- whatever you know then you add in that's you mm. you know because that's what your, your 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 surrounding has been like right you know so so the expression of that is is what makes Singapore Singapore music lah. right you know uh, not not just having to say the word Singapore you know but, mm. but the fact that any Singaporean who you know, like I said, you know, sea is getting further each day. You laugh straight away because why? It's true. You know, we're trying to expand. We're going to put six million people. Yeah, and yeah. More, yeah, know? yeah, yeah. You know, so 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 what happens now? You know, from here. But one thing I'll say lah. I mean, the younger generation all want to sound like someone else, which I feel like really. I mean, some really sound good. You know, like you can sing like that person like that person but you're not that person right you know in the end you know you need your own identity yes and and we don't have enough of that okay yeah what has Clement Chow up have been up to in recent times recent times oh my god <laughs> I'm still you know I'm semi-retired okay if I put it that way okay. yeah but I still do things that I enjoy mm-hmm. what I mean by enjoy is that's meaningful you know, that, that will help someone else. Okay. So, like, in COVID, you know, during the COVID years, I mean, I was helping the ST Pocket Money Fund, mm-hmm. raise funds, uh, Autism Resource Centre. Right. I helped uh, the, we did a project with uh, Singapore International Foundation. Mm-hmm. You know, we had the front line. We did the, you know, we brought back this old idea of tele singing, telegram singing. Oh. Have you heard of I mean, like, you know, so, so like if your relative is in the front line. Right. And you want to give a, a message. A message. Right? You send a tele- yeah. uh, singing telegram. Yeah. Singing telegram and you yeah. say, hey, uh, from, from you, okay, Chris to, uh, Mary, say, right. you know, yeah. and Mary, uh, take care. Keep strong, whatever. Yeah, yeah. And here's the song that I want to dedicate to you. Right. Right? And I get Rahima to sing. Huh. And suddenly, you know, she opens the thing and goes, Hi, Mary, this is Rahima. You know, and uh, I'm going to sing this song for you. And the message is from Chris. Uh-huh. Ta-ta-ta-ta. 
Well, that's cool. Yeah, so we did that, but yeah. it was a lot of work. Yeah, well, oh I can imagine, God. man. Oh, the, the, the amount of... Uh, recording. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's Not ridiculous. Only that, yeah, but we yeah. can't sing whole songs. So right. that's the good thing yeah, because yeah. copyrights. Yeah. So we did short versions. Yeah. So it's like AGT. La. Mm-hmm. American Got Talent. Yeah. You know, all the shorter versions, you know. Snippets. Straight away go yeah. to the big big sound really. <laughs> and then, and, <laughs> <laughs> so it was fun. La. But it was challenging. I mean, uh, but meaningful. Right. So a lot of people got, you know, and then uh, recently I've been working with uh, a few more charities like Ray of Hope, mm-hmm. their crowdfunding place mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, raise money as well. You know, they had a concert there and then uh, I did, there's a new place also which just opened, it's called Equal Dreams, you know, and they are a campus mm-hmm. that houses 250 over uh, rental flat kids. Oh yeah, so these kids are, you know, have been interviewed, have potential, and these guys give them six years of tertiary education free. Wow! Yeah, to see their dreams come true, but it's a tall order, lah. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. for the kids, lah. So once the kids come in, they live there like a boarding school. But weekends going back, go back and see parents. So I did a musical, you know, with them and uh, raised good money, mm. you know, for them to carry on, and mm. then. Uh, Recently, yeah, I mean, what was my last project? Doesn't sound as if you said me retired, man. <laughs> no, no, but these are fun, lah. I know, I, you I know. know. And I, know, I, I know. I've been, I've been. It's you good know. work. It's good work. Yes. Yeah, and and there are a few other things which I am not, you know, saying yet. Okay. Yeah, yeah, but uh, there's a musical coming up as well. Okay. Uh, I'm doing for Changi General Hospital, celebrating 88 years. Mm. You know, so they they are already on the way. Oh, I love the energy. The nurses, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you love the energy. You still, you still, you still like a little bit like Peter Pan, man. Yeah. You're, you're still young, man. And you know, at a hard look at you. You're so jumpy about all this. You know, you're so like you know, so full of life about this. It's amazing. Well, I have to, you know, you got to live. One no, but I'm happy to see you like this, bro. Yeah, really, yeah. I am. I really am. Not really easy. Am. I'm sure it's not. I'm sure it's yeah. not. So, um, we have to end the show. So, oh, yeah, okay. it's been more than an hour, you know. Is it? Oh, wow. Yeah. That's a, old farts can talk, man. It happens all the time. Every one of my guests, huh? Has it been more than an hour? Yeah. Um, because it, it's always about, it's always about, when we have good, you know, when we have a good conversation, it's great, right? Right. right. Just one last question. What is your one wish for Singapore? Yeah, wow. <laughs> loaded question. <laughs> well, it's a question. I wouldn't say it's loaded or not. Well, I mean, I have many wishes, but I th- I suppose, you know, to yeah, to really be able to have I mean to to listen to the ground, you know, and mm-hmm. and, and and to be able to hear what people are feeling. Feeling really. Okay. I mean, you know, because you can listen and not hear. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, and 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 it's a lot of that going okay. on. And the, fr- you know, I wish that Singapore would be, if if we came together in a way that, you know, there's a lot more, you know, understanding, empathy, empathy. Okay. You know, and and I think people ca- we can continue to move on. Yeah. You know, because it's not an, it's never easy. Mm. You know, where we try to build a society yep. and, and a be a small yep. with limited resources. Yep. But uh, certainly, I wish the best, you know, for our country. Okay. You know, yeah. So, you guys, uh, <laughs> I'm so happy. You cannot imagine. I've, I've, I've had so... Actually, got a lot more to say, you know, but then I uh, will up really. <laughs> <laughs> Next NDP. <laughs> <laughs> We it's been great, man. I mean, thank Thanks, you so much me. for being here. Thank you. I, I, I'm so happy to have had this chat with you. You know, I've I, so much more insights. As a matter of fact, all these years, you know, I've not known so many of these stories. Well, actually, there's a whole lot more. Oh my god, I'm pretty you sure. Have no idea. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Otherwise, this will be a two parter, man. Yeah. But uh, this, be, is, <laughs> this is this is this is my, my way of honoring you in my tribute to music icons in Singapore, and you're certainly one of them. Thank you. So yes. really, I, I, I'm really honored to have you on the show today. And uh, also, this is our National Day special. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I'm, I hope you guys have had a great uh, NDP parade, enjoyed the parade. And now that the parade is over, please do enjoy this episode. And from all of us here at CCB TV, happy National Day 
to all my fellow Singaporeans. Happy National Day! Woo! Majula Singapura. Majula. <laughs> See you soon and have a great one. Oh, I forgot. As you are celebrating NDP, <laughs> you got to make sure that you have some of these bunchkins called vades from Gordon's vades, yeah? Make sure that you have them. Order it early so that it can be delivered to you for National Day. Ooh. These are the best vades in the damn land, let me tell you, okay? So NDP is n- nothing without Gordon's vades. <laughs> so make sure that you get online or you can WhatsApp them. And yeah. it was on screen just now. Just rewind it back and give them a buzz. Yeah. Thank you again, Gordon Zvaris. Thank you, VJ, as usual. Sorry, I almost forgot, but I got it done. <laughs> Once again, people, have a great NDP. Bye bye. Bye. Yeah.